um, this is going to be massive. You mm. made the comparison to Jimmy Samuel, Savile. Um, I think it will probably it easily could be even bigger than that. And, and that that is a dedicated NSPCC hotline which is supported by the Football Association. Danny, what what were your thoughts when this first came out? Because obviously, I mean, I know it's documented, of course, and you've spoken about it. You played at Crew. Um, did you have any inclination at that time, uh, when when you were at that club, that there was anything untoward going on? Well, in answer to your first question, when I, when it first came out, um, sadly, no, I wasn't shocked because obviously Barry had already been um, it's a prison for crimes many years ago of the same crimes he's been accused of now <clears throat> so i wasn't shocked i was a bit surprised by who it was because i knew him he was a bit older than me but played with him at crew andy um i know that his sister was married to barry for a while so it was kind of like even more of a shock in a way but the more i thought about it and actually remembered back to my time it made sense because if you the other lad that came out steve walters who was a good pal of mine in fact spoke to him not so long back he um, he was older than me as well, and and my crossover with Barry was quite quick. So I went to Crew when I was probably 12, 13, and he left not soon after. So I probably only had maybe a year, if that really, were in in and around him. Um, some of the lads he'd coached for five, six, seven years before that, so he knew those lads a lot better than me. Um, strangely, the guy himself was quite charming good coach uh Benel. yeah quite quite well liked with the lads because of his great skills and the sessions he put on but i did see there was a certain side to him that was quite aggressive and he was quite he was a bit of a bully on certain victims within the coaching i'm talking about um so he did have two sides to him and it was only really after he left and you i got to know some of the lads that i started hearing little whispers and rumors if you like but when you're 14 15 16 at a football club with a lot of lads things do get said and you don't really have the intelligence to to take them in process them and think of a bigger picture um because i took stick myself i mean i stayed with dario for many years that was uh, as in as in off and on you know weekends here and there to, i couldn't afford to travel back and two to play the games and i used to get stick myself um so you kind of it goes over your head a little bit. What kind of stick? Oh, from these senior boys, you know, you get spent if you're one of Dario's boys or you know all that stuff. But I have to say on that actually, I, I feel sad that my fantastic memories of Crew, and I think there'll be other lads in my boat have been. Uh, 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 my fantastic memories aren't shared by all of those I thought they were shared by. Because it was a fantastic environment for young kids to be in and families. Parents were welcomed in, did lots of family days. Um, Dario was like a second father to me, a perfect gen, a, a brilliant coach and somebody I still look up to. I, I sincerely believe that if he'd have had any indication of any of that going on, he, he would have done something about it. Um, well, I have to believe that, you know. That's that's the, the relationship I had with him. So... I'm sad that he might be tarnished and the club is tarnished because it did so much good work and still does. But unfortunately, when you get something like this, the questions have to be asked. Crew have to open the doors now to the authorities and answer anything that needs to be answered and just put it all out there because the problem's been people being quiet, not talking about it, not mm. opening up. And, and we have to stress that uh, there is no reason to think that Dario Grady's reputation is in any way tarnished. No, but you or, always or get... the football clubs. Is, no, but is, but, is but what you need. To, but but what and, and Danny has said it perfectly. People are now asking the very legitimate question as to what people know at Crew. What the chief executive. How did it happen? Knew, mm. How did it happen? What Dario knows. People, anyone connected with the club who was there or around the club at that time, we need to ask about because th for this thing to to continue. Football has to stay silent. If football stays silent, then it's failing in its duty of care to the mm. thousands of kids that aspire to be part of it. Let, let me it, give, let me tell you how some of these things happen for anybody listening, and it's not difficult. And Darren and I were talking just off air. What a what a easy 
breeding ground is for someone like Barry Burnell. Lots of football tournaments, not just professional clubs, Sunday league clubs, amateur clubs all across the country go away and play in tournaments, in country, even abroad. And you get 15, 20 lads, sometimes four or five different age groups going with four or five coaches, staying in average accommodation where everyone crams in. It's that's what happens. You go. I went to a football tournament in Blackpool. Um, Barry took the to- took the team. Um, I think we were in four, four, six to a room maybe in a little pokey room. And you know, later on, I heard that he would oversubscribe. You know, like the the amount of people to the room. So it, that was another opportunity for him to get close and stuff like that. That's what I was told. Allegedly, I I didn't experience that. So I can't say for sure, but those are the type of things that you started hearing as you were getting older. But back to the point, the opportunity to be around children continually is easy for a football coach. Yes. And now yeah. looking back, it makes absolute perfect sense that that that's what he would do mm. or any anybody do. Any because people. it's all about accessibility. Accessibility. And the other thing and the other key, which is what Andy Woodward was talking about, is... All these children are desperate, desperately seeking guidance to become a footballer. And you, that particular coach, if he does it right, becomes your shining light. He becomes the one that can make it happen for you. See, for me, luckily, when I was at Crew, Dario was that man, Kenny Swain, um, Alex Gibson. For a lot of those lads who'd been there, it was Barry. He could make or break them because he'd been their coach for so long. You with me? So he had the power. He had the power. And and I'm using him, but I think generally... Are the coaches. Yes. Yeah. It's the power of, yeah. I can make you a good player, I, or you or not. And then the fear of children, of course. So but, it's... I'm very saddened by it all, and, and I'm, I'm agree, I agree with that. I think there's a lot more to come. And I don't think the train just, just stops at crew. That would be ridiculously naive. I think this is going to be blown apart. And I, I encourage anybody listening to come out and speak because even when I got asked the other day to speak to a journalist, I had no problem doing it because why why try and hide anything? Mm. Even if it's negative, put it out there. Let's let's get to the bottom of it. Well, well the just ho- to add to that, Jim, yeah. Jim uh, I don't think, <laughs> there's no way it stops at the Northwest. No. I mean, this is a, a country, this is countrywide, this is, this is massive. Um, I think we're only scratching at the surface. I, I have to mention the journalist Danny Taylor at The Guardian, who, whose interview with uh, Andy Woodward uh, sort, uh, started this whole ball rolling. But I think it's going to gather momentum. I think it should. As Danny said, I think anyone who knows anything has to speak about it. And people will keep calling that hotline. Well, the hotline, this Ennis uh, PCC hotline, is supported by the Football Association and is available 24 hours a day. And its number is 0800. Zero two three two six four two. We're back after this. <laughs> 